Hello everyone, I am Sharif Ali. I'll be presenting our work on T-Force, exploring the use of typing force for three-state virtual keyboards. Because of the versatility of touch screens, they have been widely adapted in various form factors. But when it comes to text entry, there is still a significant gap between typing performance on a flat surface compared to the physical counterpart. In our work, we are focusing on 10-finger typing. The literature on improving the performance of 10-finger typing on a flat surface can be broadly categorized into three directions. The first is by modeling the data from virtual keyboards to predict the key the user intends to trigger. Second, by providing visual, audio, and haptic feedback, and also using tactile cues. The third one is with enabling a resting state on virtual keyboards. Our work falls in this third category. Using this resting state, has been studied well with smartphones to enable gesture typing, which is commonly found on many smartphones nowadays. But it hasn't been extensively studied for 10 finger typing. With physical keyboards, we have three states when a keystroke is being performed. First is the release state, when the finger is not touching the key. Touched, when the finger has touched the key, but not pressed down. Lastly, the press state. On virtual keyboards generally, we only can distinguish the released and the pressed state. But a lot of the previous work has shown the significance of resting state for typing. Three-state virtual keyboards attempts to simulate this third state on a flat surface. There are two notable related work that implements a three-state virtual keyboard for 10-finger typing. Tumble implements it by having a temporal window. It considers all keystrokes to be a tap. Hence, any touch event that is below a temporal threshold which was 450 milliseconds in their case, would be considered a keystroke. As a result, a keystroke is only triggered when the finger is lifted, as opposed to when, is, when it is pressing down, like with a physical keyboard. Tabboard, which is much similar to what we do, uses a force-sensitive flat surface. They use the data from the surface, including the force data, as well as an array of other inputs, to train a model that predicts if a touch event is a keystroke or a resting event. Similar to the tabboard, here also they make a few assumptions to enable a three-state virtual keyboard, like the use of a temporal window and the assumption that only one finger would be touching the surface when typing. We take a different approach to this. With a force-sensitive flat surface, one could assume we can have a threshold, and when the force exceeds this threshold, we consider it a keystroke. If not, it's resting. For this, first of all, we need to understand what are the force characteristics when interacting with the virtual keyboard? Then, if we can use these force values to effectively distinguish between the states. The expected functionality of a T-force function is to differentiate between the pressed and the touch state. The release state, of course, is trivial to determine. To answer the previous research questions and also derive this function, we run a series of studies. Similar to typo, we used the sensor move as our force-sensitive touch surface. We had a printed keyboard attached to its surface to function as a guide to which part of the surface belongs to which key. The typing data was shown and collected through a web GUI. We also used the webcam pointing down to track which finger is being used for which key with the help of media pipe. We used this setup for all of our studies. In two data collection studies, we first collected data where the participants were resting their hands on the flat surface and then collected users typing on the flat surface as a two-state keyboard. We tested if other factors might affect the force exerted, but we found no significant effects. More details can be found in the paper. With the data we collected, we derived a constant threshold by training SVM models on a subset of the data because of the data imbalance. And getting the hyperplane of the top models, the resulting threshold we got was 31 gram forces which is much lower than most physical keyboards, which is around 50 gram forces. We see a significant overlap between the force exerted when resting and typing. Based on the data we collected, one in every five keystrokes would be classified incorrectly, which is not very good. Also, the act of using the threshold is expected to change the behavior of the users. To further understand this, we ran another study with a three-state virtual keyboard. To further gain insight into what happens, we set the threshold to a lower 20 gram force. From the results, we see that the finger being used for a key had a significant effect on the force. Similarly, 
when the participant was treated as a factor, there also we saw a significant effect. We also further grouped the keys into columns. We saw the finger and the column as factors were correlated. Column groupings here is the common finger to key mapping used in touch typing. Also, we saw roughly 24% of the time in contact with the surface was in non-key non stroke events. Also here, we saw 91% of the recorded keystrokes were above 31 gram sources as opposed to the roughly 81% as seen with the SVM models. Another interesting observation we made was the time taken to trigger the keystroke. In most cases, it was below 8 milliseconds, which was the resolution of the sensor move we had used. This is much lower than the temporal windows that were used by the previous works, which was 100 milliseconds for the type board and 450 milliseconds with the type board, though they trigger the keystroke on a key up event. We also looked at the number of false negatives and the effect different factors had on it. Similar to the effect on force, here also we see the participant and column number having an effect on the false negatives. Note that with typing tasks, we can't extract the false positives as it is not entirely possible to distinguish between typing errors and errors as a result of misclassification. Based on these observations, we explored how the constant threshold can be modified. We looked at three different approaches. First is personalization, where we asked the participant to do the resting and typing task we had done to derive the constant threshold, then use that data to derive the personal threshold. Second, we adjusted the thresholds of each column, where the center columns would have a higher threshold and the columns closer to the sides would have a lower threshold. Third, inspired by the previous works, when actively typing, the threshold of consequent keystrokes are lowered, which we call the dynamic threshold. We ran one more study to observe how these approaches would affect the errors we saw. We had five conditions, the three approaches that we discussed previously, plus two uniform constant thresholds, one 31 gram force, the threshold we had derived, and 50 gram force to mimic the threshold of physical keyboards. We also used a search and type task to have a more realistic typing task. The participants were prompted to search for a phrase on a grid and type the phrase in. They also had pauses between each prompt. We had asked the participants to keep their fingers on their keyboard during the pause and had a text box display and mistakes to allow them to get used to the three-state virtual keyboard. Additionally, we also had a set of phrases that contained only the letters on the default resting location of the fingers. We used these phrases as an approximation to measure false positives. The assumption here is, since the fingers wouldn't have to move, the chances of typing errors would be much less and uniform across the conditions. From the results, we see the number of false negatives was much higher with the uniform high condition. The participants also found it not comfortable to type with the high threshold. We also saw the non-uniform threshold has much fewer false negatives. And the personalized comes in second. We also noticed the amount of time the users rest their fingers on the keyboard outside of the pausing between the typing tasks. This is most likely because of the design of the task itself. This also shows that when the participants were encouraged to rest their fingers, they adapt to it. With the false positives from the home group keys, we see the uniform high has barely errors, but the non-uniform threshold has a higher number of errors. Participants also had mentioned that the non-uniform and dynamic were confusing at times. They weren't sure when the key was being triggered. This brings the question, is it not possible to minimize both false positives and false negatives at the same time? If not, which one should be prioritized, which will leave for future work? For completeness, as an initial evaluation, we also assess the typing performance. We see the proposed modifications to the T-Force function have better performance since it is not done with a complete transcription typing task over a long period of time. It needs to be considered with care. But we still observe performance comparable to other approaches. In conclusion, our analysis shows that the use of a good threshold function can be used to define a three-state virtual keyboard. We also see the use of a constant threshold is not the optimal approach. Here, we had studied the three approaches individually to observe how they impact performance individually. In future, we could also combine these approaches to get a better result, which could be further improved with appropriate feedback. Thank you.